What's up, freaks? It's this is Steve says episode number ninety eight. We got you on different cameras up here, so I'll be looking around, up, down, left, right, all the different camera screens. We got the Facebook here, the Instagrams up here. What is going on? Episode number ninety eight. Today we're going to talk about the ten things, and it's probably going to end up being 50, 50 freaking things. But the ten things I learned or relearned this weekend. At the Squire program, which is a father-son program for fathers and their and their sons who are growing into manhood between t- ages of 12 to 16. And what I basically learned this weekend. And as you know, this this Steve says we are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. We're going to be talking about uh, basically are you living life as a role model to your family, to your sons, to your daughters, to your freaking community? And then how is your work-life balance or whatever the hell you want to call it going and then will you be the one to break the fucking cycle in your family tree as maybe things in the past aren't exactly how you wish they were in your childhood or whatever it is but are you going to be the one to break the cycle in your family as you know steve says is a live show on how to have a no excuses badass mindset guiding you to adapt overcome and destroy the obstacles that are preventing your success in your health, your family, your finances, so you can stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own freaking terms. We're focusing on MBB, that's the mind, the body, and your business, in that order. In that order. This is about having a role model mindset, and how to operate with discipline, energy, confidence, taking action, so you can be your freak self. This is a peak freak perspective on personal development, having a positive mindset, Health and fitness. Instagrams, what's going on? Michael Manson, what's going on? Pamela Hawkins, Howie Zales down on the Facebooks. What is up? All right, so we're just going to talk about this Squire program that we had this weekend, which is kind of an offspring of the project. You know, if you don't know, the project is a in-person, personal development, four-day personal development program here for men, but it really is a lifelong personal development program for men held here in Southern California. So the Squire program only makes sense that the MDK, the modern day night project is the offspring of that is the Squire program. The Squires are the pretty much the knights in training. And as much as people think that the Squire program is for the sons that are about to go through this, go into manhood and and about, it's about them learning what it's going to take for this next phase, this next stage of life going into manhood. But this is really, this is really more about the fathers than the sons, or just as much about the fathers, because the sons aren't going to get the effect that they need to get, and the right guidance, the right leadership, the right mentoring, the right fucking role models, if the fathers don't first get their shit together. So that's the first thing, is the first thing I realized is that the Squire program, we think it's for the kids, and the fathers show, show up there thinking, all right, I'm doing this for my son, and... I'm telling you about 15, 20 minutes into the program, which is about a a 14, 15 hour day straight through the night. We started at 5 a.m. and we ended at like, or sorry, we started at 5 p.m. ended at 8 a.m. around there, something like that. First 15, 20 minutes, the fathers are realizing that this was just as much for them as it was for their sons because they need this in order for their sons to get the effect that they're looking for, in order for their sons to get the leadership and the role model that they're looking for. So that was the first thing, that this is just about the dads, just as much for the dads and about the dads as it is for the freaking sons. The second thing, and these first five or six is going to be all about the dads. It's crazy. You think this program is about kids and I'm going to be thinking about my childhood and all this other shit. This is all about the dads. This is about the dads. Darren Mueller is up on the Instagrams. Andy Lopez, what's up on Instagram? The next thing is, that men need to subdue their freaking egos and stop suffering in silence and ask for fucking help when you need it. Reach out to people. Stop thinking it makes you a little bitch or makes you any less of a badass because you're, you're down or out or, or, or fucking up, whatever you want to call it. You think it makes you a little bitch or less of a badass to be vulnerable, to be in a weak position or to feel like you're, you're slipping up. It actually makes you a a bitch and less of a badass if you don't do something about it. If you don't step up, subdue your ego, and 
Stop suffering in silence and ask for freaking help and get some help and get some guidance and reach out and speak to some other like-minded men that, that understand where you're coming from. That, that was the second thing. The next thing is reminders. We all need fucking reminders. Someone told me one time that CEOs of companies should be called CROs, the Chief Reminding Officer, because you constantly need to remind your employees. You need to constantly remind your team. You constantly remind your kids. And more importantly, constantly remind your fucking self about shit you need to remember. About the basics and fundamentals. It's the basics and fundamentals that win the war. That's what wins the wars. It's not necessarily who has the larger army, who has the high ground, the more technology. Sure, that shit helps. But it's the basics and fundamentals that are always going to win the war. Who can stick to the basics and fundamentals consistently over time through adversity? Through the chaos. That's who's going to win the fucking war. And we need reminders on those basics. We need reminders on the fundamentals. There's some things during the Squire program that are mentioned or some uh, one of the dads might say or one of the instructors might say. And, and you, you see some of the, the dad's light bulbs light up. And it's really some basic shit. But they just need the reminder of this shit. Realize where they're slipping up. That's the next thing. We all need reminders. Myself included. I need reminders. The next thing was... Men specifically, I'm sure, I'm sure women too. We're talking about men here because this is this is about men, fathers, and their sons. But men put all their energy and most of their energy into the business and not enough into their family, not enough into themselves. They're sitting and building that fucking empire, thinking they're doing it for their sons and for their families. But in the in the meantime, they're fucking sabotaging themselves for actually doing their family a disservice by putting all their fucking energy. And all their time and effort into the business, into making money, into succeeding in, in their career. Which is really fucking their family up in the long run. Because success is not just about money. That is, that is not the last thing. You're on your fucking deathbed. And you, you, you spend hardly any time seeing your kids grow up. And you're on your fucking deathbed. You're not going to be sitting there thinking, oh, I sure wish I would have made more money in my life. You're going to think, I wish I wasn't such an asshole of a dad. That's what you're going to fucking think. I wish I would have spent more time with my kids. I wish I wouldn't have worked so much or wasted so much time on shit at work that I didn't need to waste time on. That's the shit you're going to be thinking of on your fucking deathbed. The next thing. The next thing I learned is you need to put yourself regularly in rooms where you're the dumbest motherfucker in the room. Or at least not the smartest. You need to put yourself in situations and around people whether it's virtually online with a, with a coach or in person. In person, obviously, even better. But you need to be a lifelong learner. You need to never be the smartest person in the room. Never be the fastest person in the room. Never be the strongest person in the room. Now, you should be smart enough to hang with the smart people. You should be strong enough to hang with the strong people. Fast enough to hang with the fast people. But you should never be the fastest, the strongest, the smartest in the room. Or the richest in the room. Because you need to be a lifelong learner. You need to be a fucking white belt mentality. And that's what th this room, there was 40 dads and sons in there at this Squire program. And it, and it was freaking awesome. All different parts of the country, all different parts of the world, all different careers. And all just soaking up knowledge from each other. You need to be a lifelong learner. Always fucking learning. Never be the one. Never be the fucking douchebag that says, I already know that. Or, oh, I've heard that before. Doesn't fucking matter. Going back to the last thing that I said a couple things ago is... You need constant fucking reminders. We need reminders. We need reminders not to be dicks all the time as men. We need reminders not to be assholes. We need reminders on simple, stupid shit sometimes. And I'm saying this myself. Again, I have to keep putting that in there. Myself included. Shit. I need fucking reminders all the time about stuff. My kids remind me about shit all the time. I get reminded by a seven-year-old little girl checking my ass, locking, it, locking my shit up in place, putting me in my place. That's where you need to be to be thinking about it. All right. The next thing is, is preparation, preparation, having, being prepared, having backup plans, contingency plans. Of course, you know, you want to go on. There is no plan B. You can say there's no plan B, but in reality, there's a plan A, B, C, D, all the way to motherfucking Z. That's what you need to prepare and plan. And that's what we did for this event because it was such a, a, a large event with so many people. So many different things can go wrong. So many things can get screwed up or get clogged up getting them on the buses. Then the buses with the dads, with the sons, who's going to be where, logistics. Like having a backup plan and prepared 
for anything. Contingency plans. That's the same thing in the military. This is all, when it comes down to it, this is military training just put into the business. This is military and entrepreneurship training combined. That's all this is. Being prepared, that's, this is what gives you the confidence in, in your, to have your belief in your ability to figure shit out. Because you're prepared. You did the practice. You, you, you got your fucking reps in. You did your due diligence in preparing for an event or for a fucking battle. You have the strategy down. You know, if this happens, then I'm going to do this. If this happens, I'm going to go and do this. And you're ready for fucking anything. You're ready for the invasion. The invasion is fucking coming. So you need to be ready for it. So preparation and practice, knowing what you're going to do without missing a fucking beat. Because I'll tell you what, some things don't go as smooth as planned. Mike Tyson says, or whoever they say says it, everyone has a plan so they can punch in the fucking face. And that happens several times when we have this amount of moving parts and there's activities and learning and different locations and parks and fields and outdoors and indoors in the gym, out at the hikes, getting everything to run as a, a smooth, smooth oiled machine. Let me tell you what, oh, there's a lot of fucking kinks that go into that machine all the time. Shit happens, shit pops up, shit gets screwed up. The things aren't where they're supposed to be. But having backup plans and being prepared makes it smooth as fucking butter. Well, not butter, because butter's fucking fat. But anyway... Makes it smooth as hell. That's you need to have preparation. The next thing, the next thing, and this is a huge one. This is an important one. Someone needs, and, and I mentioned it already, about breaking the cycle. Someone in the family tree needs to be the one to decide, I'm the one that's going to break this cycle. I'm the one that's going to end the, the, the trend in my family history and all the DNA that's built up inside my fucking family tree of not having a positive male role model, I'm going to fucking break the cycle. Even if I started going down that path, you know, maybe, maybe your son is 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old, 16 years old. And you realize you haven't been doing the shit you're supposed to be doing. You've been fucking up and you've been going along with the same, same habits and same tendencies that your father had with you of not having that positive male role model. Well, guess what? Time to step it the fuck up and be the one to be the stubborn one. Be the one to decide. It's just a decision that I'm going to break the motherfucking cycle. That's it. No more of this bullshit. No more of these men treating their kids like shit. Ignoring them. Not spending enough time with them. Working so much. And all this other stuff. You can work less and make twice as much money. Guarantee it if you do it the right way. And think about this. If you're working so much. And I said this at the event. Really. If you're working 12 hours a day. 10 hours a day, 14 hours a day, you think you're busting your ass, you're grinding it, you're hustling, you're a fucking hustler. And then you get home and you don't have the energy or you have to even pop open your laptop to keep working after you just worked for 12 fucking hours or 14 hours, you get home and you still have to open up your laptop. If you couldn't get the job done at work in 12 hours, 14 hours, even 10 hours, even eight hours, you suck at what you do. You fucking suck at what you do. Because you shouldn't get home after being out there. You're at work. You're, neg- you're, you're not with your family. You should be all in on work. You get home, it's fucking family time. That's what you need to be thinking. If you need to get still work by the time you get home, after you've been at fucking work all night, you suck at what you do. It's simple. You're not a good leader. You're not a good manager. You're not a good CEO, owner, delegator, entrepreneur. If that's what you have to do after working all fucking day. That's just the way it is. So be the one that decides to break the fucking cycle of whatever it is. Abuse, neglect, alcoholism, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Be the motherfucker that says, I'm going to put my foot down. I'm going to have some damn discipline. And I'm going to break the cycle that's been going on for generations in my family. Michael Manson fucking right. Hell yeah. Rob McCarthy, Semper Fi, brother. All right. The next thing that I learned during the Squire program this weekend. The next thing I learned was that Men need to be around other fucking men. That's something that's lacking in the world these days. Men don't have a support system of other men. Or at least not of positive, hungry, successful, focused, motivated, like-minded men of motherfucking fire. They don't have those type of men around them. You need to be around those men. Proximity is power. It's great to have them online. Great to have... Online, if you need to, again, hire a coach, do what you have to do. But men need to be around other fucking men in person when possible. And if you don't have that type of group around you, ditch the fucking losers that you hang out with and start your own fucking group. Start your own fucking gang. Create a gang. That's what the project is. 
We're just a civilized fucking savage servant gang is what we are. That's what the squires are. And it's fucking awesome. Men need to be around other men. It's just the way it is. They need other men to push them, to hold them accountable, to challenge them, to test them, to punch them in the fucking face when it's needed. Men need to be around other freaking men. Brian White, what's up? Just spoke about this today. Yes. Which part? About the men needing to be around other men. And not just being around other men, you know, sitting around drinking beers and getting fucking drunk and, and watching a football game and eating a bunch of nachos and Cheetos, letting the fucking the cheese little stains rest on your fucking gut. That's not what we're talking about, being around other men. Around other men, they're going to push you and pressure you to be fucking better every day and hold you accountable to high standards and expectations as a fucking man. They're going to push you and press you to be an even better husband, an even better father, an even better motherfucking man. How about that? That's the kind of people you need to be around. And if the men you're around are not like that, they're not men. They're little bitches. You need to get away from them and get around men that are, are, are acting the way we're talking about. Justin Rucker signed up for the August class. You got a couple weeks, partner. Hope you're in the, hope you're in the peak of your training phase. I hope you're doing the workouts that I send out every week on the, uh, on the live workouts. We are going to have some fun. I'll tell you what, I'm coming into that August project class in the best motherfucking shape of my life. We are going to have some damn fun. It's going to be hot as hell. It was like over 100 degrees today in Orange County. And Chino Hills is east and more inland of Orange County, even hotter. It's going to be hot as hell in August. Hopefully, come in prepared. Come in ready to freaking roll. All right, the next thing that I learned during the Squire program this weekend. The next thing I learned is that is that men need to teach, and not just to your sons, really to anyone, to your staff, to your employees, to your team. You need to teach, and but since we're on the son thing, you need to teach your sons how to think. You need to teach your sons how to have discipline. Don't discipline them. Don't tell them what to think. Teach them how to fucking think for themselves. So they don't have other motherfuckers thinking for them. Their school teachers telling them what to do. And, and some rapper and basketball player losers fucking raising your kids. Telling them what to think. Don't teach your kids what to think. Teach them how to think. How to make decisions. How to think for themselves. How about that shit? Fucking kids don't think for themselves these days. Imagine that. Teach them how to think. Same thing with your team. With your staff at work. Teach them how to think. One of the... One of the Big things, I was reading a book on productivity and it was talking about an app that limits your social media time. It gives you, a, you could set the amount of time you want for social media every day. And at the Squire program, one of the gentlemen said the same thing. They have access to their, their kid's phone so they can monitor it and, and limit how much they can use. But I don't necessarily believe in that shit. Like if I have to put an app on my phone to limit how much social media time I have, all I'm doing is putting a fucking Band-Aid on a fucking, on the Niagara Falls to try and stop the leak. That's all I'm doing. Need to teach them how to think, how to have discipline. Show them how to do it. Let them be, be who they need to emulate. They're probably picking that shit up from somewhere. It's probably you, motherfucker. That's probably where it's coming from. That's the way you need to do it. You need to teach them how to fucking think. Teach your team how to think. Teach your family how to think. And if you're married, have a, have a spouse, a, a, a partner, or a fucking goat, or whatever the hell you're into, and you start leveling up, and they don't, guess what? You're going to leave them behind. You need to take them along for the ride. You need to teach them how to think. Show them how to think. Show them how to operate. Show them how to do the right thing. Show them how to hold the motherfucking door open for people when you're walking into the store. Teach them how to think. Teach discipline. You know, if you need an app, if you're a fucking grown-up, and you need an app, that limits how much fucking social media time you have. You're a fucking loser. You ain't a grown up. You're just a big ass kid. Big ass fucking baby. I'll be damned if I'm going to put an app on my phone that limits how much social media time I can have. That I'm allowed to have. First of all, like, you can't just fucking delete that thing. It's so, so stupid. Fucking pathetic if you need that. And you shouldn't need it for your kids either. Because that's just, that's just, that's just like a dictatorship. That's not teaching them shit. You think they're not going to find a way around that? Like your stupid fucking app? Get over that shit. The next thing, and this one is a huge one, and I finished with this one. This is the, the, the 10, there's probably more, but the next one is there are still some good fucking people out there. There's still some good fucking men out there. There was a gentleman who showed up to this class. I'm trying to keep up with some of these comments here on the Instagrams. Mueller, what's up? We're going to see you in a couple weeks down there in Florida for the LTD. 
You never know how to be a man unless you have one in your life to show you how it's done. Exactly. You need that positive male role model. Michael Bullock, what's up? All right, so there are still some good fucking men out there, believe it or not. Even though you see all the fucking douchebags out there on the social medias and all this other stuff. And on the news, if you watch it, I stay away from that shit. But if you come across an accident sometimes on social media or out in the airport or something, you see some dumb shit going on out there. There are still good motherfuckers out there. So I'm going to tell you a story about the Squire program. There was a young gentleman, a young teenager who wanted to come to the Squire program. His mother... And, and we would let, listen, we'd let a mother take their son here. Even though it's really for dads and sons, we, a mother, of course, hell yeah, a mother could bring their, their son to this if they wanted to. But there was a, a local mom who wasn't able to, to make it with her son. And he did not have a positive male role model. So a, a former Army Special Forces, Sean Rogers, who was going to, came into town just to be this kid's partner going through this program as his positive male role model. What an awesome fucking thing. That was the next thing, that the number one way to be a role model, to show what a man is, to be a fucking selfless, savage servant. This is an Army Special Forces dude who flew into town to speak, to pour into the kids, but did the entire course himself all through the night. Did the course himself, bonded with this young man, and was his fucking positive Melvin Ronald po- po- probably created a bond with this kid for life. And what awesome shit. That was Sean Rogers. Look him up. It's Sean Buck Rogers on Instagram. I just met him for the first time. Never never knew him before, but just saw it when he showed up with this kid. And he's, he's hanging out with this kid. It was fucking awesome. It was awesome to see there's still good dudes out there. To see that how what selflessness really means. People talk about it. About being selfless and this is what a leader is and servant leadership and motherfuckers just yap. They yap because they know the answer to the fucking question about, oh, what's a leader and this and that. But they're not actually going in the motherfucking trenches and doing it. Flying in, coming into Southern California on a Saturday night and staying up all night, not going to sleep, doing all kinds of these weird, crazy challenges and hikes in the middle of the night and, and having to take these classes when, you, when you'd rather be sleeping and not really even eating too much. Just to be a selfless, savage servant. That's what this shit is all about. That was like the biggest fucking breakthrough and and take home that I saw. Seeing what selflessness really is. Seeing it in action. And it fucking motivated me to do even more. You can always do even more. Whatever the fuck you're doing out there. Whatever you think you're doing, you think you're doing enough. There's no such thing as fucking enough. You think you're doing, whatever you're doing, you could always do fucking more. You could always do fucking more. There's always a shitload more you can do. So these are just some of the things off the top of my head that I, that I got out of this, learned or relearned out of the Squire. And let me tell you, I, even as an instructor for these programs, I end up leaving with more pages of notes. There, there could be, there's things, there's some talks from some of the other instructors that I've seen literally 15, 20 times, their talks. And I'm still sitting there like day one of class with my notebook open, taking pages of notes because you're always going to see stuff at different points in life from a different perspective and take it in a different way and continuously fucking learn. Continuously learn how to present, how to speak, how to be a performer, how to work hard, how to be a role model, how to be a leader, how to be a good communicator, how to work as a team, and how to be a selfless, savage motherfucking servant like Sean Rogers was there. It was freaking awesome what he did for this kid. Fucking amazing. That's what the Squire program is about. That's what it's all about. That's how you create a new generation. That's how you shift the tides of this bullshit generations that have been led by fucking nonsense and, and the internet. That's how you do it right there. Shit like that. So anyway, if you have any questions, comments, put them down below. If you want any more information about the project, about the Squire program, about one-on-one private coaching online, the, the project is an in-person program here in Southern California, send me a message below. We will talk about it. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, let's talk. We'll jump on the phone. We'll see what program is the best fit for you. The next Squire is coming up in January. The next projects are coming up in August, November, and February. The next three already in the pipeline. There's Operation Black Site coming in October. So we have months and months worth loaded worth of personal development 
and ass kicking coming up for you. I gotta get rolling. Let me tell you this, in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.